Good morning, everybody. We're going to get into chapter two of our new history reader. Um, we are starting, once again, the explorers unit. So we're going to hear all about different European explorers who came to North America. So what did we learn about two days ago on Wednesday in our lesson? Christopher Columbus uh, coming to North America. It's the island right outside of the United States. And who else? Juan Ponce de Leon, that's right. He was the one who found Florida, the first of the Europeans to come over and find Florida. So we are going to hear today about, um, first of all, this explorer named Hernando de Soto. So I'm going to present over to our book. And this is in Bright Thinker. You sh should be able to follow along with this later if you would like to. Okay, so Hernando de Soto. Now, another Spanish explorer who came upon interesting places in North America was Hernando de Soto. Like Ponce de Leon, de Soto was looking for riches. Instead, he came upon the most important river in North America. Now, de Soto was born in Spain. He came to the Americas when he was only 14 or 15 years old. He became a soldier and an explorer. In the early 1530s, De Soto was part of a Spanish expedition that conquered the Inca Empire in Peru, South America. Now, De Soto was second in command to the expedition's leader, Frances Francisco Pis uh, Pizarro, would be the way to say that. Both Pizarro and De Soto became very, very rich. They exploited the people in the riches of Peru. Exploit means to take unfair advantage of a person or group. So, they became rich because they probably had a lot of people who were enslaved working for them, sadly. And maybe they took advantage of the people by tricking them into uh, um, maybe giving like they had bad deals, like where they maybe purchased something for a really low price. And it was a bad deal for the people that they bought it from. But they became very rich through those methods, sadly. Now, De Soto took his riches from South America back to Spain. For several years, he lived quietly, enjoying his great wealth. Then in 1538, he set out again on another expedition to find more riches. His desire for more treasure was so great, he even helped pay for his own expedition, which did not happen very often. Like Columbus was paid to go on his voyage. Now De Soto and Pizarro, it says, took riches from the people of Peru and shipped them back to Spain. By the way, let's uh, locate Peru on the map. Okay, Peru map. Here we go. So right here on the western coast of South America is what we're talking about. And then we traveled back to Spain. Mm, it's not letting me zoom out enough, but it is right over here. All right, let me get back to the book now. Okay, now De Soto sailed west to the west, sailed first to the West Indies. Then he headed for Florida. He landed on the west coast of Florida, not far from Tampa Bay. Once on land, De Soto and his men began marching north. So this is land that already Ponce de Leon had gone to, but De Soto is going a little bit further. De Soto knew that Native Americans in Florida had fought against Ponce de Leon. That's actually the reason Ponce de Leon died was because of wounds from that fight. So they've obviously been in communication, all of these Spanish explorers with one another. So Hernando de Soto knows about what was happening to him. So he arrived in Florida with about 600 men with European weapons. So he's coming armed because he knows that the Native Americans who were there in Florida had killed um, de, de, de Leon before. So they were ready to use those weapons against the Native Americans. Now the Native Americans who saw De Soto's men must have been very surprised. The Spaniards traveled with animals the Native Americans had never seen before, including horses and pigs. The Spaniards also had metal tools and nails. They had guns and armor. These things were unknown to the Native Americans. 
So horses, we hear, um, we heard about that actually in our Native American units, um, that the horses that were brought over by the Spaniards, it was, um, oh, what was the tribe? You guys will have to remind me in class, the tribe that ended up getting a lot of the Spaniards' horses um, and then attacking the Spaniard troops, actually. So uh, this is how they're getting these horses. And like I mentioned, also pigs. There are a lot of animals um, and also vegetation that maybe arrived from other places, um, like an introduced species. We talked about that in science uh, last semester. So these horses were brought in. The Native Americans had never seen them before, but they'd also not seen their armor which as you can see here is the metal outer covering worn to protect your body in battle. What do you think they would think when they saw that? The horses and armor. Oh goodness, what is going on with this thing? I'm sorry, boys and girls. I'm going to reload the page, see if I can get this to work. Um, there's been an update with my, I usually do Google Chrome, but with an, a certain update, I can't open this PDF on there. Okay, this should now work. Now, when the Spaniards attacked, the Native Americans fought bravely, but they could not hope to win against the, the um, soldiers' weapons. The Spaniards brought in much more advanced weapons, um, so even if they, the Native Americans outnumbered them, the weapons possibly were going to win over. So they did win. Now, De Soto continued to march north. He and his men burned Native American villages, and they forced Native American prisoners into slavery. It's easy to understand why the Native Americans of Florida were afraid of De Soto and his men. They wanted the Spaniards to leave them in peace. They told De Soto that the gold and silver he was looking for could be found farther north and perhaps farther west. Native Americans also told De Soto to just march about 10 days in this or that direction. Then he would find what he was looking for. So De Soto decided to follow their advice. So he had originally come from Peru, much further down here, but over to Florida. And then he's going north and west. Okay. But he doesn't stop right there in Florida. He continues through other states, and we'll see that next. Now, sadly, although the Spanish moved on, they left diseases behind, which shouldn't surprise us. Remember that we heard about this with... Um, the uh, ancestral Pueblo, remember that they um, actually, was it the, the Pueblo people that died off? Um, ancestral Pueblo, we're not really sure of um, where they died off, but I think that it was the Pueblo people. Am I correct in that one? I'm trying to remember. Um, I, sorry, some of the names of the tribes mix up in my brain, even though we just talked about this. So um, one, or, at least one of the tribes we learned about died because of diseases brought in by the Europeans. Um, so we see that this is really one of the specific people who brought it over. Hernando de Soto brought in these diseases. Now because, and it wasn't on purpose, they just would get sick on this journey and they didn't realize, um, well, I'm sure they didn't even think about it, but some of the people in North America they had never been exposed to those before. So just like coronavirus is something that's new and um, you know people are not used to, that it affects them much worse, it's the same thing for them. Now, because the Native Americans had never faced these diseases before, their bodies couldn't bite them, bite off the disease that is. Large numbers of Native Americans got sick and died. In the years after De Soto's journey in North America, European diseases killed thousands of Native Americans. One deadly disease was smallpox. Diseases, as it turned out, were more harmful to the Native Americans than weapons. Now, smallpox, as it says here, was a serious disease that spread from person to person and would cause fever and rash. So it would often kill people, even though people could be vaccinated against it now. So smallpox is just one example of a disease that really was more dangerous than weapons. 
As for DeSoto, he soon found himself exploring much more territory than he had planned. His travels took him through areas in present-day Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, and even Arkansas. So here he's going through South Carolina, into North Carolina, maybe Kentucky even, on to Alabama, We're going through Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and over here to Arkansas. And as you can see, do you remember what they said? He found instead of gold, a famous river. Now, in May 1541, DeSoto and his men became the first Europeans to see the river that Native Americans called the Mississippi. This probably happened just south of present-day Memphis, Tennessee. Now, this was an exciting find. The Mississippi was and still is the most important river in North America. It flows from northern Minnesota all the way south to the Gulf of Mexico. So it's our longest river, um, and it was especially a form of transportation for them at the time, and a water source. So almost all of the rivers between the Appalachian Mountains and the Rocky Mountains. So that is on the far east of the country to the far west. I'm just going to get a general Google map up here. If I can zoom out. I would like to use Google Chrome, but they want me to. Oh, goodness. Here we go. I'll just zoom out. So the Appalachian Mountains run through here, the eastern coast, and the Rocky Mountains over here through the western coast, or close to the western coast, and the Mississippi River right through here. So all of the rivers between these mountain ranges really flow from the Mississippi. Oops. Now, the Mississippi and the rivers that flow into it make up a network of rivers that was important to the Native Americans in DeSoto's time. Later, this network was very important to the pioneers and the farmers who settled the American West. Um, now, this is not necessarily like Almanzo, but Almanzo did um, end up like being part of this time when there were a lot of pioneers. And I can't actually remember when he was older, if he... Um, traveled with Laura Ingalls Wilder, and they were pioneering together. Um, I'll have to look into that. So it was important to pioneers and farmers who settled the American West, and it remains very important to us today. But DeSoto did not understand the importance of his find. Um, just like um, Juan Ponce de Leon didn't really understand how important it was that he found Florida. Um, he was the first European to find the United States, this region. But he didn't really think about what he found. He had set out looking for gold, not rivers. In 1542, DeSoto caught a fever, grew really ill, and died. His men wrapped up his body and placed it in the Mississippi River. Eventually, some of DeSoto's men floated down the river on rafts and made their way to Mexico. Like so many Spanish expeditions in America, DeSoto's expedition failed to find the gold he was looking for, but the expedition did lead to surprising finds. These discoveries paved the way for further exploration of North America. Here is Hernando de Soto with some of his people who are laying him to rest in the Mississippi River. And I think I had something extra to share about that just a moment. Yeah, so he actually told the Native Americans that he was immortal, that he was child of the sun. Um, and uh, when he died, his men carved out a tree trunk, placed his body in it, and sank the tree into the Mississippi River so that the Native Americans would not find his body and realize he was actually lying about being immortal. Um, so that was a tree trunk that he was in, and then they sunk it so that they didn't realize it was just all a lie. Um, there, I'm sure were good reasons for him to say that, that he was immortal. It was a lie, so he shouldn't have done it, but maybe he thought that was going to uh, 
grant him his passage as he moved forward if they thought it was basically like he was one of the gods who was there. Um, not really sure exactly, but interesting little fun fact. So Hernando de Soto, who found Mississippi River. That's huge. So we are continuing to go further and further west into the United States and um, just going deeper and deeper into the country. We started seeing uh, some islands off of the coast of the United States, then some Florida, then further all the way to the Mississippi. So we'll continue hearing about um, other parts of the states that explorers went to. They really built on each other. Um, so if Columbus hadn't have found um, some of the Caribbean islands or the West Indies is what they called them, then Juan Ponce de Leon would have never gotten to Florida. He came because of Columbus. And if Ponce de Leon hadn't gone to Florida, then Hernando de Soto would not have gone in and discovered the Mississippi River. So that's really part of history and a lot of um, science as well, that people build off of the people before them a lot of their thoughts and the things that they've discovered. Uh, in science, you're going to be hearing about like Alexander Graham Bell um, next week. And if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have a lot of the modern technology that we now have. Uh, so it's really interesting to hear these kind of stories, because even though we are so much more advanced and we can, you know, just pull up a map just and in five seconds on my computer or on a phone, um, we wouldn't have that ability and we wouldn't have the development from all of the Europeans who came to the United States if it weren't for some of these explorers. Um, it is also good though to be thinking through some of the ways that they hurt the Native Americans because the Native Americans were the ones who'd lived there for so long. So they hurt them with the diseases that they brought in, they hurt them um, you know, with actual fighting, with battles uh, with some of the um, Spaniards who came in. Um, and we'll be hearing about other ways as well. So that's, that part is definitely very sad, but it is part of our history. And um, it's still significant that these Europeans came over and made America the country that it is now, partially because of them coming. So that is all that we have for the history lesson. You'll be taking notes actually Monday. We're like a day behind with these history lessons. So um, it's actually gonna be Monday that we take it. Uh, it's off a little bit because of the snow days. Um, anyway, so hope that you're enjoying this unit. I think that it's really fascinating. So hopefully you do too. I'll talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day, boys and girls and weekend. <laughs>